So welcome to another Coach's Talk where we explore topics to help you get the most out of your running and training. Yes, and today's topic is shoes. So we're going to talk about running shoes. What do we have first on the list, Michael? I think probably first thing is when do you need new shoes? I mean, we've all got running shoes now, but when's the right time to buy a new pair of shoes or right. go shopping for shoes? Right. And I think the very first thing is whenever they start to feel uncomfortable. I think if you're at the point where your current shoes don't fit well, they're no longer comfortable, or they're starting to deteriorate and fall apart, you definitely need new shoes. Yeah, yeah. no matter the age or the miles that you've put Correct. on them. Correct, yeah. And I think also you need to be proactive and have be shoe shopping and get a new pair well in advance of needing them. Yes. Don't before wait you, till the last minute. Yeah. Opt for getting a pair before you need it. Yeah. Uh, because then that way you have the time to switch that pair out with your old pair. You don't want to go immediately from one pair to a new pair. You want to yeah. be able to switch it out before yeah. you need it. Yeah, correct. And then once we go shoe shopping, what do we need to look for? Yes. When you're shoe shopping, there are a few things that are important to look for. Comfort is yeah. the most important. So before anything else, um, you'll go to a running shop and, and, and a lot of running shoes, they have a lot of benefits and features, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Before anything else, think about comfort because that will be the most important when you're on a run for 30, 40, an hour, two hours. Yeah, absolutely, right? definitely. And I think also too, when it comes to like the features and benefits, I think in terms of running shoes, like less is more, like yes. when it comes to like stability and stuff like that, I think the less, rigid they are and the less plastics involved and all of that I think is, is a, of benefit to runners. Absolutely. Some runners will need more stability, but I yep. think if you can, opt for the less stability that you can get by with because the more stability that you have in your shoe, the less you use the muscles in your feet for stability. And you want to strengthen those muscles Definitely. in your feet and in your lower legs so you get stronger. And if if you think about it, if you have a pair of shoes that basically holds your foot still to give you lots of stability, you're not using any of those muscles in your feet yeah. and you're not becoming a stronger runner. So go with less, as little as you can as yeah. possible. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And another one which I learned only recently was like going up a size in shoes. Um, in my first training season, I just wore the same size running shoe that I'd always worn. And by the end of that season, I had black toenails from mm being too tight so definitely go up a size particularly if you're doing long distance training and long distance events absolutely yeah. long distance runners will need um usually a bigger size 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 and a half um i go uh yeah size and a half up even yeah and that's because when you're running long distances your your feet um will tend to swell after a certain amount of hours or sometimes even 30 minutes, but usually if people are running for more than an hour or an hour and a half, two hours, you'll find that the shoes at the end of the run start to feel a little bit tighter. And if that's the case, it's definitely helpful to have a little bit more room in your shoe. Yeah. And there are a few other reasons that you had mentioned. Yeah, so one of the things that I noticed was um, over a season of training, my foot had actually flattened out. And so because of my foot had flattened out slightly, that meant that my toes were, or my foot was now longer than it was before. So I need that extra room around the toes to, to allow for yeah. some movement. And it's also nice with the repetition to not have your toes bumping up against oh, yeah. over and over the, the front yeah. of your shoe. So if you have a little room in there, you can prevent bloody toenails, um, missing yeah. toenails and this sort of thing. So think yeah. about that. Yeah, definitely. And I think another good point is to also, when you buy new shoes, is to bring your old ones with you. Yes to the store. Don't forget your old pair of shoes. This is very yeah. helpful because the uh, store clerks can actually have a look at your old pair of shoes yeah. and see how you're using them and wearing them out and see, and you can also test them out in comparison with Definitely. your new pair. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You can look from the back of them and see the wear patterns where you, where you, the most of the force through your foot goes and transfers to the ground as well. Yeah, and then I'd also say when you're out there shopping for shoes, try on as many shoes yeah. as you need. Don't be shy about getting 10, 12 yeah. pairs out to go through them to try and find ones that work best for you. Because sometimes uh, I think people just think, oh, you know, like I'll try two or three on and that's enough. Give yourself the opportunity to try 10 on and see which ones really work for you because not 
one shoe is going to be right for everybody. So find ones that are good for you. Yeah, and I think it's important too when you're trying on those shoes is that you get to simulate as close as you can as to how you're going to use them. So if you're at like a running store or something, they'll generally let you go outside for a short run around the block or they might have a treadmill or something in store where you can test running in your shoes because it's a very different experience mm -hmm. than just walking around the, sh the store on carpet yes. or something. So Test them out before yeah, buying them. Definitely test them out. Um, and one thing that I love doing is if you're getting it down to a couple of pairs is have one on one foot, one on the other foot and then run in two different shoes at the same time because you can then really feel what feels good, what feels bad, where they, whether they're too tight or slipping or... Absolutely. Because you know, we're, remember, we're picking on comfort, not yeah. by how they look or... Yeah, sometimes hard to do, but yeah. comfort's more important here, guys. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> definitely. Um, and then you might also want to pay attention to the heel-to-toe drop. If you don't really know what that is, it's the difference in the height between the toe and the, the heel of the foot. And if there's more cushioning in the heel of your shoe, the toe drop, the heel to toe drop is going to be higher. Yep. And when that happens, that actually changes the way that you, you land. It changes the way that you run. So if you're going to be changing the heel to toe drop from one pair of shoes to another, you just want to keep in mind that switching that up or especially um, changing the heel to toe drop when you for con have consistently been running yeah. in one and you want to switch it or increase it or decrease it, that you might need to take some time for that because you don't want to switch the way you're running too rapidly. So pay attention to the heel to toe drop to make sure that you're not changing things up too much. And, and maybe you need to change things up because it's not working and perhaps a heel to toe, changing the heel to toe drop to something closer to a more natural state yeah. is I always think better. Yeah, that's a good point. And I think that leads nicely into, well, how do we, once we get our new shoes, is then how do we break them in? How do we rotate them into our running? Because the last thing you want to do is buy new shoes and then go out and run 20 kilometers on the weekend in yeah. your brand new shoes. It's the last thing you want to do. Yeah, you probably will want to hang on to that older pair of shoes. Definitely. Keep it for a while. There are a lot of a lot of things you can do with an older pair of shoes. If you're if you're good about getting the, the new shoes before you need them, you can hang on to your older pair of shoes for several months even, and you wanna rotate them in and start with the smaller runs. So if you get a new pair of shoes, start with an easy short run before you wear yeah. them for a long run, and do that a few times before you try them out on the long run. And I definitely do that for quite a few times before you try them out for your main event or for race yeah definitely don't buy new shoes for that upcoming race it's you'll too late. yes <laughs> you'll want to wear them in first for, yeah for quite a few runs yeah and that's a good point too Laurie is that um, switching them in so one good thing is as you replace or buy a new pair of shoes is to keep your old ones so that you've got two pairs of shoes and as you break in the new ones then you can start to rotate between two different pairs of shoes or maybe even three different pairs of shoes as you train throughout the week so that your foot is not getting used to and, and comfortable with one, one pair of shoes. Right. You're starting to, you know, work those foot muscles and stuff a bit more. Absolutely. As runners, we want variety in our training. Yeah. Variety is important to expose our bodies to different stimuli. And if we are wearing the same pair of shoes over and over again, month after month, year after year, you're not giving your feet and your, and your body the opportunity for that variety that you get when you change your shoes. And when I say change your shoes, I'm talking about having two or three different pair of shoes in a week um, that maybe have a different heel to toe drop, that maybe have different cushioning, that, may, that support your feet in different ways. So you get a lot of variety when you're out for a run and that's great training for your body. Yeah, definitely. Yeah? I wear three pairs a week. I have one for my long runs. I have one for my faster runs and I have one for my slow, easy recovery runs. Yes. And, and I try to switch them out regularly with a new pair before I need it. Yeah, absolutely. And then we have a fourth pair of shoes, which is for the wet and muddy conditions. Absolutely, Because yeah. the last thing you want to do is get your new shoes wet because what can tend to happen is they deteriorate quicker, they can shrink some of the materials and stuff, mm -hmm. and yeah, you don't want to be exposing them to the elements. Right, and if you go for a rainy run today and you need to run tomorrow, you exactly. might want to have a dry pair of shoes to put on tomorrow. Definitely. So always save an older pair for those um, muddy, rainy, dirty runs. Yeah. 
Anyway, hopefully that's some good, helpful advice yeah. about shoe shopping. And if you have any other questions or comments, please let us know in the comments below or send us, um, send us a message and we'd be happy to answer. And we hope you got some value out of this video today. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Happy training.